Greetings, people of God. It is Testimony Tuesday, and we're still looking forward to y'all sending in y'all testimonies, if possible. All right, so this testimony started with, I was dating this girl, and um, I brought her to church one Sunday. And we had plans that after church, we were going to go to drive down to Myrtle Beach and have dinner and just walk around. And she lived in Charlotte, which is two hours away. And so she came down and enjoyed church service with me that Sunday. And let me tell you, I was paying for the dinner. I was driving, I was paying for the dinner, and I only had about $60 to my name. I didn't have nothing in the bank. I had about $60 to my name. She came and we went to church together. And our plans, remember this now, our plans was after church to go down to the beach and have dinner together. And I was paying for all of that. And at the time, at the time I was, um, I was the usher. I was an usher at this church. So I'm on a door ushering. And you know, we got visitors there. And when I'm on the door ushering, I look and I see this visitor. I see this visitor, it's like the Lord highlighting them. I see this visitor all the way up near the front of the church. And I heard the Lord, the Lord say, so strong. Give him everything in your pocket. I ain't gonna lie to y'all now. Come on, can I can I just be real with y'all? I wrestled with this. I wrestled with this, and I'm gonna tell you why. Because I got her here. I invited her here. We go into the beach. We're gonna have dinner on me. And I heard the Lord say, Give him everything in your pocket. People, now while I am wrestling with this, the guy, sta he starts standing up. Now he coming my way. And I'm still wrestling with this thing because I ain't gonna lie, all this flashing in my mind in a matter of seconds, I'm like, what in the world I'm gonna tell her? I got her all the way, she got her own money now. But I'm, I'm thinking that I got her here. Now she's going to think I played games and that I never intended to pay for the dinner, that I always expected Huff to pay for it, and that I just, I'm just playing. Which wasn't the case. And let me say this. I never doubted what I heard God say because it was so, I mean, the Lord was on me heavy. He was on me heavy while I was on the door ushering. I'm telling you, I believe I could have laid hands on anybody and pow, they went down. He was on me that heavy. So, after the Lord said that, and I'm wrestling with that idea, the guy gets up, and I guess, I think he's heading to the bathroom, which he gotta go by me to go to the bathroom. So, he come in my way, and you know what? I ended the wrestle. The whole wrestle was the enemy, first of all. I wasn't wrestling with God, I was wrestling with the enemy to do what God said. Whenever you start looking at looking at what God said and looking at your situation, you not walking in faith. You not walking in faith. You walking by sight. Cause I'm looking at her, cause she was sitting right in the back where I, usher, where I was ushering at. I'm looking at her, I'm looking at what God said. I like later for that. The guy was coming my way. I went and grabbed a tie envelope out the bucket. I put every diamond, I'm talking about pennies and quarters and bills and all. I put that all in the tie envelope. He come in my way. The wrestle is over. I'm gonna follow God. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna obey God. She can get mad if she want. She could go back to Charlotte two hours if she want. I'm gonna obey God. I put it in the, in the tie envelope. I licked it sealed. And when that man came, I opened the door for him to let him go, go, to, go out the doors of the sanctuary to the bathroom. And I came out the door with him. 
I put the I put the tie envelope in his hand and I said, I didn't even tell him God told me to give it to him. Did I? I did. I did. I just gave it to him. And I said, Can I pray for you? He said, Yeah. I prayed for him with with my hand on the tied envelope and his hand on the tied envelope. Because I believe when you sow, you gotta water your seed. Even Jesus, Jesus took the two fish and the five loaves of bread, he took the, which was a seed, he took the seed, he lifted up to heaven, and he watered his seed. That's why it was a harvest. That's why it was multiplication and multiplied. You got to water your seed. I don't care. Let me tell you something. I'm going to stop right here. When I went to the, the generals of deliverance in Texas, in Texas with... Uh, Alexis Mastin, Eckhart, uh, Kimberly Daniels and all of them, and Sophia Ruffin. A woman was waiting on me in the, in the hallway. I'm, I'm cutting right here. I'm going to get back to the story. A woman was waiting on me in the hallway. And I was, it was actually it was a line of people to talk to me. I was surprised because I had Tron Moses on my shirt. People know the name. So a lot of people was waiting to talk to me. I talked to one lady, bow, she left. Another lady waiting to talk to me, bow, she left. Another lady waiting to talk to me. I'm trying to get to the bathroom, to be honest with you. And this woman, she said, your channel was such a blessing and slapped a hundred dollars in my hand. And I grabbed her hand. She thought I was giving it back. I'm like, woman, is you crazy? I ain't giving this back. She thought I was giving the hundred dollars back. I wasn't giving the hundred dollars back. I was grabbing her hand to walk so we could both pray over and water the seed together. I always water my seed. That's the point I was making. So I was praying for the guy. She thought I was giving that hundred dollars back. She said, no. She she jumped back and no. Said, is you crazy? Woman, I said, I'm gonna pray. Come on, I'm telling her, I'm gonna pray. I'm not, I'm not. Giving a hundred dollars, but I ain't no fool. I huh? pressed down, shaking together, and running over. Shall men give into your bosom? Come on, God gonna give to you. God gonna open doors for you, but He gonna use a man's hand to turn the knob. God used man, but anyway, I pray over the sea. Bow. He goes in the bathroom, and now I'm feeling good. I ain't gonna lie to you. I'm feeling good. I don't have no money to take her out and feed her now, but I'm feeling great because I obeyed God. I obeyed the voice of God. The Bible says, whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. Boy, did I reap. Let me tell you something. After church, me and a girl still went to the beach. We still ate, had dinner, whatever. I told her, now I believe in doing things in secret, and not in front of everybody to get a reward so man can praise you and pat you on the back and tell you good doing a good job. I believe doing things in secret and letting the Lord reward me openly. So when I do stuff, I don't tell people I did it until I receive the harvest, until I receive the end of that thing, till the testimony come. But anyway, I told her what I did. Because And the only reason I told her what I did Because now I invited her And, that, and it, I feel like that was only right I invited you I don't have the money now And I want you to understand why I don't have the money So I told her The Lord told me to give this guy at church the money So I don't have the money now She said I know I seen you praying for him and stuff I didn't know she turned around and was looking and watching the whole thing So she said I pay I pay for dinner Hey, still got to eat. But anyway, next Sunday. Somebody say next Sunday. Next Sunday, the prophet is preaching. And while the prophet is preaching, the prophet of the house, while the prophet is preaching, I'm saying to myself, how come prophets never say anything to me? That's what I was thinking. We had a prophet come near the one time. And the prophet tried to preach. The prophet tried to preach. The prophet tried to get in the word. But the prophet ended up prophesying to about 95% of the church. I kid you not. He wanted to preach. He tried to preach. But the Lord was on him. He started preaching. He started prophesying to 95% of the church. So that had just happened. So while she was preaching, the prophet of the house, I was saying to myself, how come prophets don't ever say nothing to me? 
I'm saying that. I'm being honest with you. I can hear God for myself. But sometimes you 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 want a word. You you want a word. Come on. Let's not be high and mighty like we're so deep in the Lord. Who don't want a word? I'm not no prophetic junkie now. I'm not going get on I'm not getting on every prayer line to receive a prophecy. I'm not getting on no. But I wanted a word. And I kid you not when I tell you this. She looked at me as if she heard what I just said to the Lord. How come prophets never speak to me? She looked at me. And I told her most of this testimony. I don't even know if I mentioned that part. But anyway. She said, Tron. And I forgot what she said after that. But she came down off the pulpit. And she said, she started talking about the photography business. How I'm going to be traveling and doing photography and God going to put me in the presence of great men and blah, blah, blah. And she said, now remember y'all, this is the next Sunday. Somebody say next Sunday. Next Sunday. She, she prophesying and all. And she says to me, she said, you always sow into other people and you feel like you never get it back. She said, everybody in the church, get a seed in your hand and place it at the man of God's feet. The entire church and place it at the man of God's feet. Now, let me tell you something. Some of y'all believe in coincidences. I don't. I believe when you sow a seed, you gonna receive a harvest. I sowed a seed the Sunday before. I obeyed God. I did what God told me. That's the first time God ever told me that. Give him everything in your pocket. And to this day, I don't know that man's situation. He looked like he was dressed nice. Honestly, I really did. Look, he looked like he didn't need the money. That's why you gotta walk by faith and not by sight. You gotta obey the voice of God. You can't go by how the situation look with your natural eyes. You got to obey what God said because the man did not look like he need the money. He looked like he was doing well, but God said, give him everything in your pocket. Come on. In the next Sunday, the woman of God, the prophetess of the house told the entire church to place a seed at my feet. Look at God. Do I think that was the prophet? No, that was God using the prophet because whatsoever a man sows, that, I always put emphasis on that when I say that scripture, that shall, shall he also reap. If you sow love, you're going to reap love. If you sow hate, you're going to reap hate. If you sow finances, you're going to reap finances. Come on, whatever you sow, that shall you also reap. And let me tell you, and it didn't click on me when everybody was coming and laying all that, all that money. It was a lot of money, y'all. All that money at my feet. It didn't dawn on me that last Sunday, I obeyed God. And that's why this is happening. Now, I don't remember if it was later that day or the next day that it clicked. But I'm telling y'all, the next Sunday, the next Sunday, I received my harvest. And I just wanted to share that with y'all. And have faith in God. Believe God. Don't be, don't be afraid to sow your seeds. And I ain't talking about sow your seed to me. I'm talking about at your church, people you know, wherever you want to sow your seed. Now, if you want to sow a seed to me, hey, to God be the glory. But this is Testimony Tuesday. I just wanted to share that with y'all. Somebody say, next Sunday. Ha <laughs> ha!